Buffalo Bills here, same one. It's over 10 and a half, Sam. So the Bills, you know, for the Bills and the Ravens, two teams that almost played each other in the AFC Championship, right? A play away for the Bills from playing in the AFC Championship against the Ravens. But both teams maybe go into this season with a little bit less hype, a little bit more discomfort as far as turnover on the roster goes than some of the others. What are your thoughts on the Bills at over 10 and a half? Uh, just, uh, I, I was looking, I grabbed an article that's pre-draft actually has the Ravens a win better. So apparently the Ravens got a win worse off after the draft. Oh, really? Yeah. Based off, uh, based off an article on draft Kings. They were at 11 and a half. Yeah. They were up there with the highest win totals in the NFL and apparently the draft, or at least the time between March 20 something than now has cost them a win. Maybe it's because everyone else got hurt. I mean, everyone else got better in the draft. Yeah. And they didn't think the Ravens did. I don't know. Apparently. All right. Anyway. Bills Bills have the same number, 10 and a half. Where are you going there? 10 and a half for the Bills. Again, like the Bills were a really good team. Um, but we still, I mean, I at least have those concerns about what this offense is going to look like. Now, you can spin that in in either direction right on the one hand this is going to be the first sort of full season of that new scheme of what that's going to be remember they they made a, a coordinator change midway through last season and okay anytime you do something like that the new guy coming in is not going to be completely overhauling the system right like he even if he comes from a completely different scheme coaching tree that has a different language and a different way of doing things and all these kinds of things you can't institute that a week eight, right? You've got to, it's a gradual change. You've got to sort of make some tweaks to what's already there and then build upon that in the future. So this is going to be the first full off season where they're going to see what is this new direction going to be. It's also the first time this offense is going to apply their trade without Stefan Dix. They traded him away and haven't done a great job on paper of replacing him. Now, the flip side, you know, the, the positive spin on that is you say, well, okay, we just, we don't need that type of receiver anymore. We're going to go in a different direction. We're going to operate, you know, across the middle more. We're going to use those slot receivers. We're going to have a two tight end offense. Like we're, we're moving away effectively from an offense that relied on Stefan Diggs as the primary X receiver, the guy that won on the outside, you know, the, the, the alpha within that system. Um, so it doesn't matter that that our kind of replacement for him is this hodgepodge of Keon Coleman in the draft and, um, you know, Marquez Valdez-Scantling as a late uh, free agent signing, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I, I think anytime you start off with Josh Allen, the Bills are going to be in and around the playoffs. They're going to be in and around double-digit wins. But I do have more concerns about them going into this season than I've had for the last three years. Yeah, so the other factor that I keep bringing up and that mentioned this with the Ravens is the division. So you, this is the first year, presumably, the Jets will have Aaron Rodgers and will be a better team. So not that it was easy for the Bills. It came down to the wire in the AFC East last year. But now you have a comparable Dolphins team, a Jets team that I think is very much in that same mix. We just talked about the Jets being a top five roster on Monday's show that you should go back and listen to as well when we talk about the best rosters in the NFL. That's what the Bills are competing with. So all, all of the things that you said, is it a reset year for the Bills? And, and look, we're two years removed, two years removed from the Chiefs winning a Super Bowl in a, an expected reset year, right? You're going to get worse before we get better. We're going to get younger. And they still competed because they had that core foundation, a.k.a. the quarterback, yeah. intact, right? The, the Bills have the quarterback. They have Sean McDermott, who has years of success. Right, it, McDermott has done a great job in Buffalo, make it, combining with Josh Allen's emergence. Remember, they were good before Allen started playing like a superstar. So Tyron Taylor got them to the the playoffs. Yeah, the first that's what I mean. Like they 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 have a very good foundation in place, and even if it feels like, hey, we take a step back before we take a a step forward, it, it, they're still a very good team. So. I, I'm I'm already going to fall into the trap here, Sam, of going over on everybody here. It, it, it's impossible, but I'm I'm going to be a Bills believer this whole off season just to kind of um, offset some of the negativity that's going to be going Buffalo's way. So give me the over for the Bills. Well, you know, like I said before, the line's in the right place. It's a very good line. Um, <laughs> it's a good, I'll I, take ten and a half. I'll say it's a push. Doesn't this um, 
it, it sort of feels like if you have an elite level quarterback, like 10 wins is now your, is your baseline, right? Like that, get it just simply getting that guy almost if if all i told you was random roster x started off with this guy at quarterback whether it's josh allen patrick mahomes you know whoever it is immediately you're like well that's 10 wins before we do anything right and then then tell me about two through 53 and i'll tell you how many more than 10 wins we're gonna get so i i feel like you get 10 wins so you get to half a game within this line just by having Josh Allen as the quarterback, and then you look at the rest of the roster and say, "Is that good enough for the for the rest for the other fifty two guys to find another win from somewhere?" To which I think the answer is probably yes. Like we saw that last year, there were games where Josh Allen played terribly, and they still managed to be you know within a play or two of winning or whatever. So I I'll go with over on the Bills, even though I am lower on them this time going into a season than I've been for a while. Just to recap, last year they did tie with the Dolphins record-wise at the top, won the tiebreaker. They were eleven and six. They were uh, five and five at one point. So it, it's not a slam dunk over ten and a half. Right. They did win eleven last year, and they had to, you know, make that late push to do it. It was, you know, getting just to eleven wins was a scary proposition when you're sitting there at week ten. So again, it's not a slam dunk. I guess part of my instincts are saying go under. Maybe they'll just win ten because of the Jets being better, because the right. Dolphins are still good. I might need to say under for the Bills just to just to oh. balance out what's... Because I looked ahead, Sam. In your mind. 